Thank you, Noah and Patricia Alexander. And I want you to know that this has to be an overview because there is a ton of marketing things that you can do. There are so many things to do that it can be extremely uh, overwhelming. You can't do everything. You can only do your best. And you, I th I'm really going to be stressing about doing what's right for you. So I very, very much hope that you are taking, you will, are prepared to take notes, whether you're typing or writing on a pad, doesn't matter. I, this, I have prepared a, a, a very simple PowerPoint with all, any of the links, uh, titles of books, recommended websites, because the education that you need to have for marketing is not something that I can give you in two hours. But what I can do is lead you to the right resources and give you the concepts of uh, where what you need to do. So first of all, uh, I wanted to ask if you'd all introduce yourself and answer three questions. What is your book title? Is it written? And are you planning more than one book? Or do you have more than one book? My name is Terry Donovan. Hey, Terry, I'm I, in the one on publishing, right? Yes, yes, that was great. I appreciate it. Oh, good. Um, the book is called End of a Spiral, and it's written by a friend of mine, and I'm just laying out the book. And so um, I'm not the author. Uh, I just want to know more about the whole thing about the whole, the whole, thing, the whole marketing thing, right? Yes. Uh, will you be involved in the marketing? No. So you, you're curious, do you have a book in you? Is that what you're thinking? You know, I used to want to be a writer, but um, I'm fairly slow writer. And, um, and so it's not really, uh, I, I write as part of my job and I want to be the best writer I can be, but it's um, uh, mostly I'm interested here to just know more about how to um, you know, like the last webinar was about how, you know, how to publish it. And this one to me just goes along with it, with the marketing. I did, it's more, I just want to be able to help him get his book out there. Well, I'm still again. hearing a book in you and you know, it's your own self judgment that is saying you're slow and therefore it's not going to work because if you consider um, you, you don't know how long pretty much any book, book how, how long it took an author to write any book if the book is if you have something to say and something to give the world no one cares how long it takes so I, I just would like to encourage you not to rule that out I don't think you'd be here if that was completely out of the question thank you Patricia someone else jump in come on be brave hi Patricia and other writers my name is Diane Diamond. I go uh, publish as Diane N. Diamond. And I have two books. They're both Central Coast Mysteries. And the first one is Poisoned, How to Ruin a Life. And the second one is There's Always Something, Crime Finds Rita Charles. Ooh, wonderful, wonderful. And are these published? They are published. Um, and I have a couple local bookstores handling them. And mm -hmm. I need to get get them out to more. Also, they're being carried by an ind independent bookstore at Santa Barbara. Um, I need to get to Arroyo Grande and see if they'll carry it out there, too. Um, but lately, I've been in the cast of Gilbert and Sullivan's Rudigore that's going to be presented this Saturday and Sunday. And so I've just been completely immersed in that. Absolutely. And it sounds like fun. Yes, it's really fun and quite exhausting. So last night I got home at 1115 from dress rehearsal. We have another one tonight. So um, I'll be putting this on mute part of the time because I'll be futzing around because I have just a lot to get done today. I understand. I understand. And are you self-published? I am self-published okay. um, with some really good editors and proofreaders. So, um, yeah. Great. Thank you, Diane. Hi, can, my name is Linda. Hi, Linda. Um, Hi, and you were, at my, you were at the last one as well, right? I was, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. So my book is Garden to Table Cooking. And I um, just to encourage the, the other gal, it took me, I think, three or four years to write it. So, um, <laughs> it, but it was what it was. I published it in December 2020. And I self-published because I wanted complete control of everything. And I am, I'm online. I have a website. I have an Etsy store. I sell through a couple of local stores. I don't really do, I, I need to call on more stores and they would buy the book and sell it, but I just don't do it. So um, I Hoping just- to get inspired? Yeah, I'm looking for some, I've had some health issues from an auto accident, so oh, I haven't sorry. been able to, but I'm hoping now that I can. And um, yeah, just looking for any tricks of the trade that you might have. I got a ton. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll say, I, I see we have a chat. Is there yeah. someone saying that they can't? Uh, oh, no. Hello, can you? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah. So my name is Jules Muya, mm -hmm. and I self-published a book in 2020 called um, 40 Days and Nights, Your Healing Journey to Freedom and Purpose, which is, um, it's a devotional book. Mm -hmm. And um, I do have a couple of books inside me still, mm -hmm. and I haven't had the chance to even market my first one yet. And so hence I am here very much willing to learn and a little bit more confident this time and who my audience is. Oh, excellent. We're going to be going into that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm a lot more confident exactly who it is that I'm speaking to with, um, with this book and my next book too. So um, Wonderful. yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jules. Is it, and, and MJ's uh, mic couldn't work. Is that correct? I think uh, Heather. Hi, I'm Heather. Um, I actually, I have not published a book. Um, I wrote um, a short story about 20 years ago that I pulled out and I always have dabbled in writing and have done a little blogging and I'm interested in, you know, writing a book. And um, I have really been impressed with um, the Women's Business Center and the classes they've provided. So um, that's why I signed up. Wonderful. Well, if you can uh, catch the, the my video, the my previous two uh, webinars, the one on writing and, and one on publishing, because this might really overwhelm you <laughs> to jump right into concepts of marketing, but good for you, because part of the trick is starting as early as possible to understand. Thank these, you. These concepts. So I salute you. <laughs> Thank you. As you probably know by now, even traditional publishers don't do much to help market a book. So marketing is very, very much up to the author, unless you're on the Stephen King level, <laughs> which, I, which I don't think any of us are. So what's the point of writing a book if, if no one can find it and no one reads it? I mean, really, what's the point? So you need to start marketing your book and yourself as an author, um, possibly before you finish writing it and, and long after it's published. So you all qualify, believe me. So let's see how we can really get you excited about, about this marketing journey that you're about to go on. So the first question is really, what, what does marketing mean to you? Because it's so common to have a fear of marketing there's a discomfort with it because people associate it with negative things like bragging, um, over self promotion, sales, being pushy, whatever your resistance, any resistance that you have about this. And the fact that it is, it is definitely a big overwhelming topic. Uh, track it, understand it, don't deny it, just face it. Uh, your resistance is an opportunity to understand what you really want and what you don't want. And that's vital so that you don't disappoint yourself, that you get very clear on, on what your priorities are. So I, um, let's redefine marketing. 
It's not so, it is a little self-promotion and it is a little, it is selling, but it's not bragging. It, it really is, um, let me say this, the Authors Guild defines marketing as the collection of things that you do over time to build a positive, a positive name recognition. And for those of you with more than one book or more than one book in you, that is really important. Sometimes people write one book and that's fine and that's good. And then they, their path goes in another direction but you still need a positive name recognition because it's a long-term strategy in, in building relationships. And people don't think about marketing as that because it's really about how to connect with your readers. So uh, something to keep in mind is that Bowker, because that, you know, Bowker, that's where you get your ISBN numbers. They said in 1920, excuse me, in 2021, 4 million books were published and half of those were self-published. And so that's approximately 3000 books are published every single day. So it, it makes a lot of sense that you ask yourself, did you do a good job writing the book? Will you do a good job if you haven't written it yet? Are you, is your book delivering value? Aren't you helping people when you help them discover your book? Of course you are. So you have to, um, maybe, I mean, it's possible for some people that writing the book was enough and the marketing just isn't going to work for you. That's okay. But the first thing you want to do is have clarity about what are your goals for your book? So think about that. You don't have to well, you know, maybe we should do a round. Let's, let's go around. What is your goal for your book? Heather, what, uh, what do you see in the, for, the, for yourself in the future? What would you like your books, a book you write to do? Oh, I, well, that's a good question because I I'll often walk into Barnes and Nobles and think, oh my God, who's going to read all these books? Um, yeah, I guess I would want to have a book that people would want to read and, um, you know, finding that audience. Um, good, good. Yeah. And hopefully it would be a book that they would want to continue to read. And it, you know, wouldn't be some kind of fad book. I see. So, so an evergreen. Yes, an evergreen. That's, that's called an evergreen, right? That's what my book is. So, um, yes, it's really good to keep that in mind, too, as you write it. Uh-huh. Anyone, um, so anyone else want to, you, you, we don't have to go around to everybody, you can volunteer. What are your goals for your book? Um, this is Linda, and you know what? When I wrote my book, my goal was simply to document my recipes and help other, especially new gardeners. It's the cookbook I wish I had had when I started gardening. Mm. And I wanted to make it, easy for people to cook and eat healthy you know easy easy meals you can get your food from farmers markets even the grocery store but you know i'm a gardener and that's how what i figured out and so it was just to i didn't have any visions of becoming a bestseller mm -hmm. i you know if i can get people to buy it not get people but if if it would bless people here and there and they want it that's what i wanted to do Okay, so when you say here and there, it sounds like, and you say you don't need it to be a bestseller, that's mm -hmm. a really wonderful thing to realize mm -hmm. because that then can help put your priorities in order. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so th that's, that's a wonderful thing because too many people have unrealistic expectations. Yeah, um, I, I didn't have any expectations that anyone would even be interested in it Aww. so every time i sell one whether it's you know the local stores or amazon it's like oh i don't know who it is that bought that book in other words it's someone out of my sphere of friendship and family it's like oh somebody liked it <laughs> that's a wonderful feeling yeah that is a wonderful feeling that i know exactly what you mean thank you mm -hmm. anyone else uh this is diane diamond uh -huh. and one of the reasons I like to write is I tend to be very opinionated, 
and very political and nobody wants to see me in a soapbox and so the things that keep me up at night and that I think about all the time I like to put in the mouth of a character or several characters Smart. and I like to do that with some humor and so I'm always hoping when people read it they'll have the yeah aha uh -huh, yeah I feel that way too or maybe sometimes even angry because oh that's that's not good but also deal with that with uh, some lightness at heart and a plot that keeps you moving and some humor so that's what I love about reading and so that's what I hope people get out of reading my novels what do you will you get out of your books out of your having your books out there besides that um i have always needed to somehow get creativity out there and i think that 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 creativity and that spirit whether it be art or writing or or drama is really healthy and it's really important and and so i just want to to be out there sharing that kind of vibe wonderful wonderful okay well um i'm going to move on but please be write down for yourself what your goals are for your book my late husband michael his one of his goals for our book was to be on oprah and i couldn't convince him that it wasn't any lack on my part in my working the book that was keeping that from happening. <laughs> that, that was an unrealistic expectation and there were many, many other satisfying things. But um, it, it really helps if, if you do uh, have reasonable expectations. And so it, it's important to, to have a reality check. And to have that reality check, I'm gonna ask you a really important question. What are the priorities in your life? Living through this weekend's performances. <laughs> that's one <laughs> well i have a thought of, of i'm not sure this is exactly what you're looking for but um having retired several times and i love, <laughs> i love to work and then i was forced to give up my last couple of clients when i had an accident auto accident oh I'm do writing this cookbook has allowed me to be productive mm -hmm to have the professional side of me come out, the business side, it's, it feeds me. And also as a salesperson, I can you know, go out and sell my cookbook and get the rewards that that brings. And so it fills a need I have in, in my life for working, but not really working, <laughs> if that makes sense. Oh, goodness, it really does. I am in the same boat. I'm semi-retired. Mm -hmm. Then I'm deadline 45 years you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like enough <laughs> um great that's great because that's what i wanted to say what about passion growth mm -hmm. and the, which you mentioned freedom creativity joy and laughter receiving and providing inspiration these are important goals to align to align with in order to feel successful about marketing your book. It's very important to make sure that your life priorities and your, pri and your goals for your book are in alignment because there's just way too much potential marketing that you could focus on and you, you could work at it eight hours a day. If your goal is money and there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. I love making money. Uh, but if that's your goal, that's a, if that's a priority in your life, you're going to have a whole different goal for your book. And these things really flow from your core values. Selling books notoriously do not make most people rich, at least not in money. That said, if you really relax, enjoy the journey and the excitement of it all, the result could surprise you because I really believe that when you follow your passions and you're doing the things that bring you joy, you attract into your life more of the same. And sometimes that comes with a little bit of fame and a little bit of 
uh, money to it. So, uh, but that's having the horse and, you know, that's, that's the horse and, and the book is the cart. <laughs> so ask yourself this as well, realistically, how much time can you allocate to marketing every day? What about every week? What about every month? And should this alter your priorities for your book? And what about for your life? Because marketing takes time. It takes patience. It takes time. It takes a long view. It takes ex uh, experimenting. Sometimes you could start to do some marketing and then you just hate it. Well, listen to yourself. Don't, don't do that. If you don't want to do, you know, if it's not fun or pleasant, don't do that. Sometimes you hire, that's why you hire people to do things because you, you, I mean, if you can afford it. So I wanna congratulate all of you because you, you are here researching your book, uh, I'm researching marketing your book and, before you have really jumped into the marketing and that's exactly what you should be doing. So keep it up because I'm gonna, there's a lot of research that, reveals so many choices. And I'm about to overwhelm you with those choices with way too much information. So it's important you sift through the information and decide what you really, really need and want to do. Uh, and I have things in my, uh, mainly the PowerPoint are my hot tips. So I, I'll, I'll be having hot tips for you. I love my heart, hot tips. Um, there are a lot of resources online and you can join writing organizations and continue to educate yourself about marketing uh, and, and choose what you find interesting, as I said, what brings you joy. So don't, don't stress yourself out about marketing. Don't overthink it because between the internet and authors organizations and blogs, plus actual books on marketing, all, all the how-tos are, are easily accessible, along with a myriad of ideas for you to sift, reject, accept as right for you. And that's the only thing that's going to work, is what's right for you and your life. So I'm going to actually now take myself into stopping, you know, you, so you're not looking at me and you get a chance to really see the PowerPoint. So I'm going to talk over the PowerPoint and move it along a little bit. So um, I highly recommend, especially for your self-published people, by the way, can you see that the chat bar line up here at the top or am I the only one seeing that? No, we all, you mean um, the names of everyone? Uh, well, I, it's the bar where, where I could click on all the chats. Oh, good, it went away, hurrah. Okay, okay thank you, thank you. Sure. All right, so I highly recommend the Independent Book Publishers Association. I'm a member of that, have been a member, and it, it is fantastic. If it, they have a future author, or, or publisher category for $109 and it's upgradable once you be, actually have your book. Self-published authors and publishers are 139 as you can see. And you get a wonderful magazine from them that has, uh, and also online. It, really they have what they call a university. That's how much education they offer. Uh, it's such good value for your membership money. They have articles, interviews, webinars, successful marketing tips. Oh, they're just a wealth of, of information and highly affordable. So please, if you're self-published, don't not join this. You must join this. You'll be so glad you did. And then there's Authors Guild. And it's $100 for an emerging author membership. And with that, you get free access to all their live and past webinars. And also they have lists of contests, grants and retreats. So who doesn't want any of that? Also there's free articles whether you're a member or not. So I, I, I recommend you definitely go to their website. 
Okay, so here, here's my here's a hot tip: search book marketing on. Oops, I went too far. There you go. Uh, search book book marketing on YouTube for a wealth of information. YouTube is amazing. Uh, I was watching YouTube for for something the other day, and the person speaking was just annoying. So I searched and found someone else on the exact same topic. <laughs> was actually better but um so don't forget about youtube and also uh beth jacino's book an author's guide to marketing uh, which is only if it's used on amazon for six bucks new for 13 very very helpful and i'm a big fan of jane friedman oh, i love jane friedman she is a former publisher of writer's digest she's a colon columnist for Publishers Weekly, and her website has so many free articles and newsletters. I subscribe to them all, and also a paid one called The Hot Sheet, which was $40. I just looked online for a promo co code as soon as I saw she had a promo code, found one, and I think her hot sheet's 50 bucks. I got it for like 40 something. So I always encourage to look for <laughs> promo codes. <laughs> All right, so Jane recommends this book from Book to Bookseller, The Savvy Author's Guide to Book Promotion, Smart Branding and Long-Term long Success, $12 on Amazon. Isn't that marvelous? There's just so many resources out there. So I have a question for all of you. Did you create a business plan for your business? You're all here because you qualify as business people. And did that business plan guide you? Because that's all a marketing plan is. And the question is, if you don't have one, are you willing to draft one? If you're seeking a traditional publisher, you'll need to have done this anyway in your book proposal. But if you self-publish, um, do it for yourself because it will really make a difference and it's going to supply you with things that um, will, will just be invaluable. So Google book marketing plans for free downloadable templates and, and sample plans. I swear, I, I search everything and I find everything. It's all out there. You don't have to reinvent this stuff. So in your plan, you should, you'll be asked or you, you know, as part of the template, what is, um, what is the purpose of your book? And we all, and you guys did a great job answering that, what your purpose is. What's your hook? That's a two sentence summary that makes a stranger want to know more, also called an elevator pitch. If you got into an elevator with uh, someone who could help with the marketing and selling of your book and you had 10 floors to pitch them, what would you say? And it has to be something you're comfortable saying, something that is short and gets right to the point. So that's, that's a really important thing to practice, to get down and practice. Who's your target readership? This is also vital. Who's your core audience? Um, someone was saying that they now know who their core audience is. I think that was Diane. And, and that is so helpful to know that. Once you know that, then you can really zero in on reaching them because you can't reach everybody. So reach the people who are going to be the people who will most likely want to read your book. So what are they looking for? What do they do in their leisure time? Where are they? What's their age? What's their race? What's their gender? What's their financial level? You really want to think about this. It will, it will make a huge difference. When I was marketing, more actively marketing the Book of Comforts, I learned that seniors were great buyers for gift giving, but often had reached a level of lifestyle where they really felt like they didn't need comfort as much. Uh, I found good buyers in doctor's waiting rooms 
because that's where people are nervous <laughs> and seeking comfort. And I found much to my surprise because the Book of Comforts was did not aim at this audience that people dealing with grief were a core audience for me. And that's because um, when they were ready to get back to life, the Book of Comforts helped them to move on. What a gift that was for me to realize that. And I, I really couldn't anticipate that. So sometimes your core audience reveals itself. So ask yourself, what are you good at? Beth Giacino uh, on Authors Guild advises, take an honest inventory of your strengths and your abilities. Make sure you know your own likes, dislikes, interests, and how they align with your core audience. So for me, that's personal growth and mind, body, spirit for my book. So that's the example. But marketing works best when you combine your talents with the places where your audience will be. Isn't that an interesting thought? Where you will be, they will be. Or where, or where the, you know, all, all aligning with your book. So what ask yourself this, what circumstances make your targets more receptive to your book? Seasons like holidays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays. Is your book something someone would give as a gift? Is it something they'd curl up with during the winter? Or is it more of a summer book? Is there any relationship to seasons or holidays? It, or perhaps a circumstance uh, that's more strategic, like a surge of interest in your topic. Uh, Terry, for Terry, the TV series Julia has been a big hit showing, you know, reenacting her life. And I think that TV show is a wonderful parallel and an opportunity of a strategy for people who have written cookbooks. And that's an opportunity to grab onto that because um, it's a reawakened interest. What about times of ill health? What about conflict in, in people's lives? What if they need, well, they always need to de-stress and relax. These are strategy, strategies, strategic times that you want to be aware of because they will provide you with opportunities. Do a market analysis. Who is your competition? Now, it's funny because I don't believe in competition. I think that there are books that might be in the same, that overlap with yours, but they are opportunities because these are authors who are already reaching the same core audience you need to reach. So here's a hot tip, goodreads.com, and that they find books. They're, they're for readers, but they help authors as well. They can show what books are showing up in relationship to other books. This is how a great way to how you find your quote competition. You need to study these books. What is it about your book that is better or different from existing books? So in your marketing plan, it would be your point of difference. So Either uh, you want to, well, you want to know what these books do well. Can you find their ads, their articles, reviews on them, comments on them, social media where they're active? Their path is an opportunity to follow in that same path. As I said, you don't have to reinvent this. So here's a hot tip. Read as much as you can in your own genre. When you like the books you read, talk about them on social media and connect with other authors. Start a dialogue, befriend these authors, try to do events with them, with both people, both authors promoting, sharing the impact of both your email lists. They'll be your supportive community and some of them might just become your good friends. Make a marketing budget. Oh, I have a lot to say about marketing budgets. So writer Dave Chesum, whoops. Uh, while you look at that, I'll get to that in a sec. Writer Dave Chisholm 
uh, says that most marketing budgets are $300 to $10,000. But don't be scared. Uh, mar marketing budgets even. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry? Did someone say something? I heard something. Okay. So don't be scared about that number because, as I said, they e marketing budgets evolve. Um, so consider hiring experienced students. Isn't this great? A student marketing agency, their website's amazing. Lower rates, but these students are experienced. They're, they look like college students. <laughs> and um, this, is a, this is a great find. So this is the kind of thing you can, you can make your money work faster for you. There's actually many inexpensive mar marketing solutions, but expect to pay about $200 to $2,000 for various tactics. As noted before, your marketing budget can start small and grow, and some money is absolutely raised after publication, like eBooks. eBooks are the most profitable, even though they cost less, if uh, for those of you who took my publishing workshop, you know that eBooks, the, the, the services that publish your eBooks, they actually are not publishers, they're services, and they don't care if, you're, if your ebook is on other services, they, they, they're not exclusive. So you can put your ebooks on a, on a whole, all, all, any place that sells ebooks and, and really get some money from it. Um, they can make anywhere from 35 to 70% of the, of the cost. I recommend that you dedicate a percentage of your book sales to a separate bank account that you build um, an ongoing marketing fund. Isn't that a great idea? Because when all the money goes into one pot, you're taking away from something in your life. So start a separate account. It doesn't even matter if it earns a lot of interest. It certainly won't in a regular savings account. <laughs> but let your books create money that go towards your future marketing. Go after pre-orders uh, for those of you who don't already who who haven't already published your book. Show your book cover on social media. Develop relationships with people and seek pre-orders. So here's a hot tip. Uh, bookbub.com, love bookbub.com. This is a free book discovery service and they are so helpful to writers, so helpful. So search on there for author Debbie McComber. Now she has a, a list of marketing and reader reward ideas like bonus content. She is an amazing marketer. Now, obviously she's um, big house traditional published. She has she's with Simon and Schuster. She has 150 books, but she still creates independent promotions. So and she looks like she's having a great time. <laughs> so she, so she's a wonderful model for that. Consider kickstart sites and Kickstarter campaigns because. Um, you can do a campaign that rewards investors with signed copies, with pre-orders, with a Q&A with the author, with exclusive content. Uh, so here are some specific kick, Kickstarter sites for authors, which I didn't even know existed before I researched this for you guys. Un, you can see what they are. Unbound is international, Indiegogo creative, and if, when you go to Indiegogo, go to look for the creative works tab, and then authors and publishers, patreon.com. Boy, is that interesting. So that's where you get your core audience, your fans who are already with you. You ask them if they will help support your, your career, especially if you're writing a series of books or if you have 
um, a book that you're trying to to cre create money so that you have the opportunity to give it more time. And you do, so they uh, basically get a monthly membership for different rewards, like we were saying, um, exclusive opportunities to talk to the author, exclusive content. Aren't these wonderful ideas? <laughs> Somebody say something, tell me if you like these. I think they're amazing. But on Patreon, one author, I saw an author who charged two to ten dollars a month and, to, and she gave away all this kind of things that we've been talking about. And she now had she now gets seventeen hundred dollars a month that helps support her work. I mean, isn't that brilliant? So check out YouTube for crowdfunding tips. And also BookBud, insights.bookbub.com, um, under marketing ideas article. Nine, and this is a, a great article. You, nine ways authors can use crowdfunding platforms to reward readers. So it's just, it's a beautiful thing. So let me ask you something. Do you guys need tax deductions? Yes, you do. I was surprised I did. I, I, one year I went to my CPA and I said, why, why, why do I have, why am I paying this much tax? And she said, well, you need more business deductions. And I said, oh, okay. And so after that, I was much freer taking ads and doing different marketing plans because it was either gonna to go to the government or it was going to promote the book. So um, keep that in mind. Marketing is deductible in relationship to your book income. Now, if you don't have any book income, I'd hold off on, on having that be in your uh, tax return, but talk to your CPA about that. And the more your book sales rise, the more all these costs are justified. A hot tip that a couple of you may not be all that thrilled to hear, um, new books have a window of opportunity that's about one year to cash in on their debut longer if you start pre-publication. There are just certain things you can only do within the first year of a book being out there. So um, this is a wonderful article on, well, this came in today because I signed up for BookBub. And so now I get emails from them. And today they sent me an email about this article, how 12 authors used new releases for less, which is a category they have to support a book launch. And the new releases for less is amazing because it has, they send weekly emails to, oops, all the, pardon the dash, pardon the US, the US subscribers to the books category of relevant readers beyond an author's existing fan base. They only will do it for four weeks after a book's release day. So I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> sorry, Diane, <laughs> but you have more books than you. So, um, oh, oh yeah, Terry, so for you, uh, I guess this you're you're past this as well because you already have a book out, but maybe you'll do another cookbook. This is just an example. So for the category of cooking, for three hundred and eighty dollars, this weekly email will go out to seven hundred and fifty thousand subscribers who have expressed interest in that category. So I just want to say to you, self publishers, and to those considering the self publishing. Uh, that I too ran around to all the independent bookstores and got them to have the book, usually on consignment. I, I didn't know to do this kind of thing, but it's, it's so worth the $380 to do something like this. These things are out there. And this way you're not using gas. You're not selling one book at a time. You see the wisdom? here. 
So this is the kind of thing that can make a huge difference in your marketing life. Okay, so I recommend that you get a dedicated calendar for your marketing goals, your targets, your plans, your time, and your timing. Just get a whole, however you do it online, or if you do it, a hard copy, paper copy, but just a marketing calendar. Um, because that really lets you know how much marketing you're doing too as well. And whatever you're doing is what you can do. It's what all your life can do. But sometimes that, that can help. And it also keeps you from doing things that are too much from overwhelming you because you're doing too many marketing things simultaneously. So it can be very helpful if you're doing events to find an event marketing timeline online. So I didn't, what I found, I did find one, but I couldn't read it and I couldn't print it and I couldn't make it bigger, but some of you might be better at that than I am. <laughs> <clears throat> And check out um, the book by Natalie Obando, How to Get Publicity for Your, for your Book. That is, that is very, very helpful. Um, but anyway, about your book launch, I'm gonna go back to the book launch. You must start in advance on a book, book launch. Book launches take three months in advance before a publication to prepare for, because you need to write a press release, with photos to local papers, you need to pitch the newspapers for an interview with you. And you'll find that your local papers are, are pretty open to doing an article. It depends on what's in the news and all, but they are surprisingly open. Don't be shy about it. In fact, it can really help to find the reporter who covers things like books and take this reporter for coffee or lunch, uh, coffee is better because their time is valuable. Nobody buys them coffee. Get to know them, develop a relationship with them. They, they'll show interest in your work. They, they may not be open to that, but maybe they would. Uh, consider investing in a book PR agency when you for your book launch or find a professional with media contacts, if not a whole agency. It's well worth it for a book launch. I did that. I hired a book PR person for our book launch. He got us on, at the time, there were cable TV shows. Um, and even if, I didn't care how many people saw this show. It wasn't about resulting in sales. It was about my having the link to the video and being able to say that, and also gave us the opportunity to practice being on camera. And it, it was really a great ego booster. <laughs> um, but he also got us reviews. He got us professional reviews. He knew who all the professional reviewers were. And there are people who make their whole career about writing book reviews. And if they give you a good review, their followers pay attention. So, um, that's a, it. Sometimes it's worthwhile to get, make pour everything that you can into your launch. But remember that publicity is less about book sales and, and more about getting people to recognize who you are in a world of oversaturation. P publicity obviously is going to elevate you above the rest of the chatter, and the payoff may be more for. Um, on your ongoing relationship uh, with your readers and for your career and doesn't always equate in, in sales. So it sounds like this is a good group for understanding that and I appreciate that. Oh, and, and there we go. Now we get to how to get publicity for your book. <laughs> All right, so um, it's very important uh, and I think you guys probably know this, to create or pay for a website dedicated to your book. You may have your, uh, your web, a website for other reasons, but have one just for your book. And on that website, have a traffic counter. It's always good to know how many people visit that website. And if it's big enough, uh, maybe a search engine. N not all 
websites are appropriate for a search engine. It's very, very helpful if you can easily update your own website. I could not. I, I had my website built by the lady who designed and did the art in our book. Anytime I needed to add something to the website, I had to go to her and I had to pay her. So nowadays it's a whole different thing and you can get templates and create a fairly simple website. And your website can be as simple or as elaborate as you want or need. You can always continue to improve it. And it's good to look at other authors' websites and see what you like. But don't even consider not having a website. It, can conf it confirms who you are. I was in a webinar with the IBPA and a, an author said that she was attending some kind of writing conference and someone said, what's, what, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, you know, what do you, do you have a book? What's your book? And she said the name of the book, this person on her phone immediately put it into the phone and went to the website and confirmed that, you know, what this person's book was and uh, who she was and, and all of that. So it, it can be snap, snap, just like that. So um, how, does anyone not have an author website? Can, or I have, this is Linda, I have a website, but what's frustrating is I built it as a landing page. I paid someone to do it. And now I wish I had more of a, a robust website, but I don't have the money to have it redone. Okay. And are you, do you feel a little hesitant to try to do a template and do it yourself? I do. Uh, I don't blame you. However long you think it's going to take to build a website, it's going to take more. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know of a good program? That, that's, that's the thing is, yeah, what program to do it in? I don't, but it's Google that, honestly. Any, any question you have, search it. I, I, not everyone uses Google, I know, but whatever your search engine is, Google mm -hmm. that. You're going to find a lot of things. And, and think about the student thing. I bet there is, there are plenty of students who will take a much reduced amount of money to um, create a website. And for them, that's nothing. They grew up doing this kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And what the, I'm sorry. Hmm? I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. I was going to say that uh, one of the most common platforms for websites is WordPress. Mm -hmm. And uh, WordPress has a ton of templates and it's free. The cost of it is the amount of time that you put into it. But if you get a template, um, you basically drag and drop your images and just write your text. Okay. It That's may be simpler than you know. You know, you, if, if it, taking a free template and giving it a shot, you could surprise yourself. Sometimes it's our old story to say, I can't do that. I can't imagine myself doing that. Well, I couldn't imagine doing a PowerPoint. And that's why it's rather a simple PowerPoint, but <laughs> I, I was saying to Gabrielle, because I had resistance, I thought I should do it because why am I being resistant? You know, and I, I kind of enjoyed doing the PowerPoint and it was a whole lot simpler than I thought it would be. So um, be careful about living up to your old story. Sometimes a new story is just waiting. So uh, here's, here's a little bit of something to consider. And even those, those of you with websites, you, you might not have all, all the stuff I'm listing. So consider putting these things in, of course, all the pertinent marketing links um, to social media, to, to you know, how to buy the book and all of that. Do you have a look inside your book? Um, possibly your table of contents or a featured chapter. Or, or, or some sample pages, because that people like that. Reader comments, and th to start with, this could just be your friends and relatives and anyone you might beta test your book with. Because before you publish your book, you should really beta test it with your core audience. Does anyone have any questions about that, what I just said? No, okay. Um, about the author 
or creators. We did creators because we had an illustrator and designer. Perf um, and by the way, that should also be with a photo. And you know, the the we can make pretty good looking headshots these days. But make sure it is a professional looking headshot. Uh, don't just have yourself against your bedroom door and have it look like a bedroom door. <laughs> you know what I mean? That just looks awful. Um, so it, it can be worthwhile to hire a professional photographer. And, and when you're doing that, get some professional shots of your book cover, as well as um, photo of some photos of your book in different settings. So let's say your book would make a great gift book. So maybe a picture of someone with, or maybe a picture of like a cupcake with a candle on it and a happy birthday, you know, banner or something behind it. And there's your book with wrapping paper opened. You know, that's the kind of thing you can, a picture you can put on social media. And um, a holiday, if it's appropriate as a gift at a holiday during Christmas, you can have a shot of your book cover with a Christmas setting. That's what Debbie McComber does. So um, keep that in mind for, your, for the photos. Are any of you interested in speaking, giving talks about your book topic? Oh, absolutely. I'm big time on that. Good. Good, good. Really, I hope you all are, because it's it it really helps. It's it, and it's and it's a lot of fun. So, how to book you as a speaker should definitely be on your website. You need to write, if you haven't already, a list of suggested topics. Don't just say, "Here's how you book me as a speaker." Say, and here are some of the things I could talk about and come at your book topic from some unique angles. Uh, and have some, uh, as soon as you can, get some testimonials about you as a speaker and put those in and just keep adding them. That's another, you know, again, so handy if you can do it yourself. Uh, okay, a photo gallery. And I, what we did is that we combined our photo gallery with an event calendar, which we did not have in a calendar shape. We just had a running list of uh, the different book signings and events that we had for the book, and then scattered photos throughout to make it a lot of fun. So anytime we read an event or a signing, we always took a photo and then added that in. So it was kind of fun for us and fun for people to, to look at. So. Um, Press room, you should have a whole tab or for prep for the press room. And this is any time uh, an article is written about you or perhaps by you. And, and we're gonna get into that a little bit more about you writing articles. Uh, and also uh, obviously any reviews that you have and um, media comments, which is comments from you being on the radio. And by the way, booking you, there's local radio. You guys are in, all in the slow area. There are radio stations that will interview you. All you have to do is search it out and contact them, send them an email, give them a call, tell them what you have to offer. And that's another good thing that you need to be really clear about what you have to offer. And then there's author endorsements. Author endorsements are uh, going to be so important to you because uh, that's, I, I assume that if you have an author endor an endorsement from another author, that that's on your back cover. Uh, and so uh, if you don't have your book yet and you then that is something that you want to pursue. And I, I'm going to have a little more on that. So Michael and I went to we went to a lot of workshops for personal growth and mind, body, spirit. So we went to a workshop with Angelus Arian. Has anyone heard of Angelus Arian? I don't know if she's still with us. 
um, well, she's just a, was a, a guru, was a guru in the Northern California area, wrote amazing books, Second Half of Life, and uh, she had how-to tapes out about um, getting value from your life, just so many things. She had a real following. So we gave her the manuscript and she gave us an amazing endorsement and quote that is on the back cover of our book. And then there's Cheryl Canfield. We, I was in the library, uh, library, I was in a bookstore, I was in Barnes and Noble. And I had a friend who was in distress, potentially suicidal. And I was looking at books that might help her. And I came across Cheryl's book, Profound Healing. And she, off, she, she says on, in the book cover, you know, that she was available for individual counseling. So I called her up and told her about my friend and I sponsored my friend to have some sessions with her. And of course I bought Cheryl's book. Well, Cheryl and, and I and Michael became friends. This is from my pulling her book off of the shelf. And she eventually had us come to Copperopolis, which is where she lived, and held a, uh, a, an event for us. So it, it, it's amazing where these paths can lead you. Also, we took a workshop from Alan Cohen and Alan Cohen gave us a, a wonderful endorsement. Uh, the book had already been published by then, but <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> and then we also had a, a quote on the back. We have a quote on the back of the book from an art critic because our illustrator, artist, designer, Dean, um, was a big part of our book. And so we wanted to, to have her included as well. So here is something that will help you. How to secure early endorsements called blurbs for your book by Penny Savieri. So if, if you, and it's still good to get that, even if you've missed the cover opportunity, definitely good. If you do, um, POD, uh, then it's not too late. You can always redo your cover or also for um, eBooks, you can redo your cover anytime you want to. So keep that on, keep that in mind. Let's see. And then we had buy the book where with links for, uh, but there were two sources to buy the book, book lovers and booksellers. So you want them to have complete access to that. And then, as I said, we had an illustrator. So we had an artist statement. And then we had, we have something on our website that says, see it, buy it. So she had the art that was in the book that was actually for sale. So um, very good to have favorites, uh, favorite links. I actually don't have that on my website, but favorite links to other authors and ask them to link to you. This is why it's so good to make friends with other authors. We all help each other. We're really not competition. If you find someone who's competitive with you, don't make friends with them because we, we all need to help each other. We want someone with that heart and with that soul. How to contact you, obviously. Um, definitely don't recommend putting your phone number on there, although mine is, and it's never been a problem. But uh, generally, in these, this day and age, uh, people don't recommend that. <laughs> and a sign-up list for a possible newsletter, for a blog. Um, it should be in a prominent box, either on your first page or, and on your contact page. It can be to sign up for pre-launch pre-orders. It could be for your blog, for your newsletter, for new books, for giveaways, for events, for tips, for recipes, for all things that collect people's emails. So now let's talk about your email list. You want to build one immediately. How many of you have an email list going? I need to start one. <laughs> yep. You need to start an email list. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's tremendously helpful. So you capture the emails of your fans, of your relatives, of your friends, friend, of your friends and your friends' friends and your relatives' friends. 
You can buy lists once you truly understand the demographic of your core reader. So here's a great uh, lead blog.readsy.com. Readsy is another wonderful website that helps authors. Uh, author dash e email dash list, how to build an author email list in six simple steps. There you go. See, someone thought it all out for you. Uh, also build a downloadable media kit. So this is an overlap, of course, with what you have on your website, but you don't want to say to, to a, the media, oh, just go to my website. You'll find it there. You want to send it to them. So you want to have this separate. This is, has your reviews and for some reviews are paid for and some are free. A fact sheet. This fact sheet is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it has your ISBN, the date published, the publisher, how many pages, synopsis, distributor, et cetera. It's just all the facts, ma'am. Um, I was very interested that we were asked by our publicity person to create a Q&A with ourselves. And the reason is interviewers are probably not going to read your book, but don't take it personally, help them. They can draw from your Q&A for anything they write about you. Isn't that brilliant? I just, I love that. Also, uh, if you haven't already, you're going to acquire different word count synopses. I have summarized the Book of Comforts in 15 words, in 25 words, in 35 words, in 40 words, in 60 words, in 100 words. I mean, I have all these different versions <laughs> because as you um, do different advertising and do different things, they're going to give you word counts. And once you create a word count on it, save it uh, instead of having to reinvent it. Also a bio with that professional headshot. And you're also going to accumulate completely different versions of your bio with different word counts and different emphasis. So like the bio that Gabrielle read to you about me, I wrote that fresh for this. And it's, it, I just let my own personality be in it much more than a more straightforward bio because I have the freedom to do that. <laughs> So um, these are the kinds of things you want in, in your, your media kit. So let's talk about monetizing your website and blog uh, with affiliate program links. Do you guys know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? Like yeah. Amazon affiliate programs? Well, that's one of the places. Oh. Yeah. Does anyone not know what? what a affiliate link is. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming, I know one lady's um, microphone is broken and I, I don't wanna make assumptions. So it's really just where you get a small percentage of the sale if somebody buys it through you, clicks through you. And it's good manners to identify that, to say, you know, I get a small um, bit of money if you, but if you click on this and buy through me. So this guy, whoops, Raf, raphaelreiser.com, he, he has a free article on monetizing your website and blog and the eight best affiliate programs for writers in 2022. Isn't that great? I just love it. All this stuff is out there. So blogs and newsletters, only spend time on these if, if you can and you want to. This is where you give away the kind of essential information that will be timeless and lead your readers to your book um, or online classes. You might, that's another way to monetize this whole experience is to offer online classes, uh, even when it's in your archives. So it, the reason I'm saying that, and that is from um, Friedman, is that people sometimes use their blogs and their newsletters 
and go off topic. And it doesn't have anything to do <laughs> with uh, leading to anything that relates to their book or to anything they offer. So that is what social media is for. <laughs> if you want to have conversations about things, do it there, but not in the blogs and newsletters because it's an online content strategy. You create interesting articles, columns, and have guest interviewers. You don't have to do it all. They get shared and discovered through search engines. Again, you don't, this isn't, uh, marketing is way more than getting your book in, in your local independent bookstore. This is where you're helping people. This is where you're connecting with your audience by giving what's called value in advance. And it should all lead to things that you offer. So when you, if you decide to do a blog or a newsletter, know your voice. Is it inspirational? Is it educational? <clears throat> if it is educational, don't, don't get dry. Keep your personality. Readers don't just want information. They stick around because they want a relationship with you. Only write about things that connect to your current or future work. That's what I said. Save, and I said that about social media. Okay, Jane, I blanked on her name, first name. Jane Friedman, search on her website. She has a search engine, blogs, newsletters, social media. Some of this I got from her, you'll recognize it. And she, she just has so much to offer. Okay, um, social media, who, who, who's using, who's on social media? Who's using it? Anyone? Not me. I gave myself permission not to. Absolutely. <laughs> and that is your right. And I have something for you coming up. So um, you don't generally make money <laughs> on social media platforms selling books. But it can grow your email list. Um, oh, so here we go. Um, wait a minute. Which social, here we go. Which social, this is from, uh, oh, social media is another thing to search on Jane's website. Which social media platform is best by Carolyn Topperman? And I'm gonna give you a little summary of that, but that, that is definitely an excellent article. So she says, are you all good with my moving on? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she says any social media can be good to grow your email list and possibly to sell books, especially seasonally or strategically. Um, Facebook and Pinterest are good to promote your blog or articles. Facebook and Instagram are good to connect people and share personal information. And you can cross post just by sliding a toggle. So that's very handy. On now, let's see, you guys ready? Okay, so on Twitter, you can, uh, remember the life of a tweet is 18 seconds. So. Um, but there's a lot of agents and editors that just hang out there. So you can learn about the latest trends and what they're looking for. Isn't that handy? Now, magazine editors uh, and reporters are also there. And some of them may answer questions. And it's good if you're trying to get their attention. And then where did TikTok go? I think I have it on another one. All right, Facebook, uh, longer conversations with the community. Um, it's great if you wanna write a lot <laughs> and have longer conversations and, and you already have developed a community. It's good for marketing advice from existing writing groups. <clears throat> and Excuse me. And um, in developing a community on a private page by sharing links and and blogs, but Topperman advises, if you're not already on social media, don't, don't start from scratch. It is too slow to build. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry, I duplicated that Facebook one. But TikTok 
uh, as videos with music and you can build a following, but not a community because it's so fast paced. But it's a great place for you to get comfortable in front of the camera. And it's very, very easy to share videos with other platforms. <clears throat> really, if you get the article, all this is in there. Pinterest acts as a search engine uh, minus the social. This is best for others to find you um, because uh, it's, it, it's a search engine without the social aspect. And you can cross post from sites like Instagram um, and you can post tips for your target audience who might be looking for information. So here are, so here are three hot tips. Carolyn Topperman, she really wisely says that the real question is, what is the best social media site for you? It comes down to your personality, what you like to do, what you want to achieve. Second one, social media will not sell books. It's not transactional. Be yourself. Give joy about your subject. Have conversations. Develop relationships and invaluable contacts. Now, here's the tip for people who hate social media which is, or just don't want to be on it, which is fine. Check out Dan Blank, founder of wegrowmedia.com, where he, he helps authors develop their platforms and connect with readers and launch their books. So that's another very valuable resource. I recommend you sign up for his free newsletter and blogs, um, like Growing a Readership uh, Without an Online Platform, and he has that article there for free. So that is very important. And then briefly, I want to talk a little bit to you guys about merchandise. So besides having a business card with the picture of your book and a picture of you on it, and that's a must, um, and maybe pens or something like that, bookmarks are the most common merchandise for marketing. And on the bookmark, you can put quotes from your book, or you put your philosophy, put the social media sites you're on and your website, maybe your email. Email me for free whatever is a good thing because remember, that's how you collect those emails for your email list. So we did cups, we did ceramic quote tiles and blessing boxes. And, and boy, our when we had a book selling table, it was so pretty, but I got to admit, I had very mediocre results. I, I never understood why people weren't buying it. You know, they weren't overpriced. I, I love them and I'm very glad to have them. And they did sell and one store took them. Um, but in the long run, it, it wasn't particularly successful, but that's okay because you have to experiment with this kind of thing. Autographed copy stickers. Do you, you, all, you, those of you with books out there, do you have those? Very easy to make them, uh, to have them made. Um, anything that prints labels does that, just says autographed copy. And then when you sign a book, you put that on your book. It increases the value. It, it, it adds value to it. Plus, by the way, if you have a Barnes and Noble signing and Barnes and Noble is very, very open to local authors, by the way, and if your book's already been out for a couple of years, don't worry about it. They're okay with that. Um, anyway, they would, if for self-published, they'd probably be on consignment. I don't know if, uh, well, you, I assume you have a distributor and if you don't go back and look at my publishing um, webinar because I talk about that. But um, if you sign your books in a Barnes and Noble, you can leave some behind because they can't return them. <laughs> but don't overdo it or they will be mad at you. <laughs> Award stickers. It, it, I hope you guys are submitting for different book contests because it's, um, it's a great idea to do that is very meaningful to a prospective buyer that your book has won an award and it feels great to win one. The contest will usually sell you stickers to put on your book, gold if you win, silver if you are runner up, because 
you buy those stickers from them and it helps promote them. And uh, it just works both ways. And readers don't care uh, what, where you, what the award is, if the sticker looks impressive. So here, oops, there we go. I'm sorry, I should have gone to that. Readsy.com search for reputable book contest list. Some have fees, some don't. Okay, so the IBPA had annually the Benjamin Franklin Award. It's got a lot of categories. You do pay to enter. It is so worth it. It's a big darn deal. And we won a silver um, finalist winner. We're the silver finalist winner, winner on our self-help for best spiritual book. Look at that sticker on my cover. Isn't that impressive? That's Ben Franklin. And we actually flew to New York for the award just because we could <laughs> and we found it so exciting and we thought we'd win we really did <laughs> but we didn't get the gold sticker but we got the silver sticker and so i'm very proud of that there is no book i have no book that goes out without one of those stickers and now i'm always referred to uh, as in writing as an award-winning author it, it is it is tremendously meaningful isn't that pretty? That is beautiful. <laughs> but, but, I need a little validation also, there. <laughs> also, Patricia, there was a comment in the comment section from oh, thank uh, you. Terry. Mm -hmm. She said, Sticker Mule has frequent sales of 50 stickers for $19. Oh, I think you can get them cheaper. Uh-oh. Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of, uh, it's like the most prominent place to get um, return address stickers and and uh, I got it I got a better deal than that yeah I'm sorry I can't remember what it was specifically but anyway anyway buy a book all right uh, wait wait sorry another comment you can get them cheaper but you have to buy hundreds is what Terry says oh well I don't okay I, I, I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name of the place I get it from. I, I, maybe I wanted a hundred, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, what it's could be well worthwhile to have a hundred um, signed, uh, you know, author autographed stickers because, you know, you build it, they will come. So I love putting those stickers on my book. And that's something also to think about if you haven't written your book yet to design your cover to accommodate space for those stickers, which my book luckily did because we didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll say, so I had that out of order. Okay, so advertising, we're gonna talk about advertising. Um, so you guys might know this, you might not. In 2021, Apple updated their privacy protections to now hide your IP address so senders can't link it to your other online activity or, or determine your location. And that completely upended Facebook advertising by about $10 billion. Google followed suit in February of this year. So that reduces reliance on Facebook ads for authors, making it even more about relationships. So um, I, let's talk about Amazon. And it, and it doesn't mean there isn't something to explore there on Facebook. There's still Facebook uh, ads, um, but I frankly didn't get into it. So I'm sure you could find more information on that. So, you know, don't assume you know anything, just search it out. And all of these great websites I'm giving you will have something on there. All right, Amazon was really a search engine um, and there's all kinds of complicated things to read about how to make it more successful at finding your book, like algorithms, how the cost per click CPC ads work. And thank goodness there are free webinars, boot camps, and books on it because it is very complicated. Um, and, but it, it has a huge payoff. So this is where it's very good to understand what your goals are for your book and for your life, because people who invest their time into understanding how Amazon ads work get a big payoff if they can be patient. So 
um, check out advertising, obviously advertising.amazon.com in just, and go, in, you know, dash industries, look for the industries tab, then book publishing. And then Dave Chesum, who I adore, um, amscourse.com. And he's on YouTube. He has wonderful tutorials on YouTube. He's good looking. He speaks clearly. He shows you click here, then click there pictures. Um, and I think he's, he's just wonderful. He, that's um, Kindlepreneur is, his, is what he calls his business. And then Mastering Amazon adds an author's guide by Brian Meeks. It took Brian Meeks, who's a numbers guy, six months to experiment and figure out the best um, ad system for him on Amazon. But he got to the point where he was making seven grand a month and, quit his, and was able to quit his job. But that is with a total dedication to it. And it wasn't that it was six months every minute of his time, but he's big on experimenting. So, okay, well, let's see what about this and what about that? Um, and so, you know that how when you go on Amazon, and uh, some products will say sponsored. I always thought that meant this is a better quality product. Well, no. What that means is that promotes products to shoppers who are actively searching keywords or a similar product and to be able to get that sponsored label for a bit, you get a sponsored display ad and sponsored product ads. And um, it's all a very complicated bidding process. And there's a, an algorithm involved uh, so it's about what category you pick. Maybe you pick, you know, I'm willing to pay. My budget is, uh, they, they, they call these things a campaign. So you say, start this campaign for this ad on this month, on this date, maybe no end date, maybe an end date. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to pay a maximum of uh, 17 cents a click, but don't go beyond a hundred bucks. And it's not the highest bid that wins. It's not, it's not how that works. It's about um, Amazon analyzing in the category that you've chosen, what is your chance of success? How good is your book cover? How good is, are, is your um, website, your marketing, all the stuff that you do uh, and your reviews and the stuff that uh, all your support circumstances what are the odds that you are going to have good sales as, and therefore they'll make more money? So sometimes a smaller bid, 10 cents a click, 15 cents a click, that's what um, um, Brian Meeks at, was experimenting with. And that's, so it's very worthwhile if you wanna get into this to read his book. And then there's also something called lock screen ads, and that's based on shoppers' interests. And that's when a reader unlocks their Kindle e-reader or their Fire tablet to read or shop. And I was a little confused about what applies only to e-books and what applies to uh, printed books. But the whole thing is, is quite a huge topic. But if you are a numbers person and this feels interesting to you, it will pay off to check out all the tutorials and to try to understand it. Does anyone here already understand it? Quiet, <laughs> there's absolute silence, roaring silence, okay. <laughs> but um, my hot tip is that all ads success are linked to what keywords you pick. Your website is linked to what keywords you pick. So at any rate, that's always very, very important. Um, and, and phrases. Okay, where am I? All right, on ads, you can also advertise with your distributor. Um, when I do that with New Leaf, which is a self-help distributor and, it's, uh, and, and I'm with them on, um, they don't buy the books, out, I'm on consignment, but they take a box of my books and then I get paid as they sell. And I take an ad with them at all. I always see it bump sales. And then some of these organ writers organizations I've been telling you about, they have cooperative ads. And so I just bought a quarter page ad with the IBPA for their fall catalog. 
So as a member price, I saved $200. I paid $250. It would have been um, $450. And for that, I get, they design the ad, I approve. I get digital distribution with Ingram's top 3,500 book retail accounts. I get IBPA's house list of 200, more than 250 independent bookstores. And isn't that better than just racing to a Royal Grande, right? I get um, the American Booksellers Association, the ABA, in September will get a physical mailing of the catalog to 750 of their most active indie stores. So isn't that a great deal for 250 bucks? So that's, that's uh, and it might cost you that in gas these days <laughs> to get to Arroyo Grande from Slow. Uh, it could happen. <laughs> so advertise um, online or, or in mailed magazines of the special interests of your core readers. That's one of the reasons that the boons of under understanding who your core reader is. So um, we'll go back to you, Terry. Cookbooks. Well, there are cooking magazines. You could take an ad in the cooking magazine to advertise your cookbook. You could pitch a ma the magazine for you to write an article, or maybe they would like an excerpt from your cookbook because your book qualifies you as an expert in your field. So you go after that second party endorsement of being seen as an expert. It feels good, it hel you're helping people and you are helping people find your book. And by all means, if you do have an ad any place, please do approach them um, about an article or an excerpt because they often want to stroke their advertisers. That just happens. Um, it also adds credibility to your reputation. It helps people. It adds to your media kit and your website, and it just plain makes you proud. So an article can be offered as a guest blog, and that leads people to you, supports other writers' blogs, and it can become a talk. And it goes into your media kit and on your, and on your website. Now, here's a little hot tip from me. Photocopy and, or scan and scan your article without a date so it doesn't age. Because no matter how good your article is, if, it, you know, if it's evergreen, and uh, it might not be. But if it is, then don't let the date appear. No one's ever asked me about that, <laughs> my articles. <laughs> So blogs, how about blogs, blogs, and podcasts? So as an expert, offer to be a guest writer on others' blogs, as I said before, and they're a guest speaker on their vlogs and podcasts. And then you link their stuff to your website and they link your stuff to their website. It's a wonderful scratch your back strategy. So the author speaker, selling books in the back of the room. Speeches are articles, articles are speeches, both promote, create contacts, and lead to paid gigs. Yeah, oh, actually, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead there. Uh, but if you're shy about speaking, or if you're rusty, get yourself to a Toastmasters group. You have three of them in San Luis Obispo. So just go to toastmasters.com. Anyone here at Toastmaster? There, it's it's so worthwhile. Mm -hmm. It's so it's very inexpensive. Um, let me jump ahead to. In my Hi, notes. This, this is Linda, and I'm not currently a Toastmaster, but when I began my career, I went, and it was life changing. Life changing. Yes, it is. So what they do in Toastmasters, and it's 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 um, and I think the whole thing is sixty dollars to start, and then forty five by annually, if I remember correctly. And oh yeah, here I have it. That's exactly right. And um, so you get a handbook. There are ten themed talks uh, that everybody gives over a period of time. And the, when I'm saying theme, I mean inspirational, educational. Read from something. Have no notes at all. Use props. 
you know, that's the theme. But what you talk about is your choice. So it's a great place to go and develop talks on your book and your book content. Um, and we had a chiropractor in ours and it was great because he, he was really, he always talked about chiropractic, but it would, they were always different talks and they were fascinating. He was practicing with us and everybody gets up there and does it. So everyone's at the same amount of risk. And also you learn how to comment on people. I think one of the, the best comments I ever got uh, and you win ribbons and these ribbons mean nothing, but there's, so, but you want them. <laughs> and so it, you get uh, uh, ribbons for best, uh, co best re commenter <laughs> and you get a chance to, and a, and a ribbon for best talk. And it's just so much fun to accumulate these ribbons. And um, um, it, every meeting's different. So a 6.30 AM meeting are gonna be go-getters. These are people who have to go to work and, um, they're willing to be there at 6.30 in the morning. So they, that's a very energetic group. Um, you know, they've had their coffee. They're ready. They're doing this. Now, a noon meeting might be more social. And there are different, you know, sometimes there are Toastmasters meetings with themes. So there are singles Toastmasters meetings and there are seniors Toastmasters meetings. So you, your first meeting is always free. They welcome visitors find out where they are, just go to one and see what you think, see which group you meld with and which one works for you. I highly recommend that. And develop your talks there. So when you're going out as a, as a, as a speaker, start with free talks to service organizations um, like Rotary and Kiwanis. They have a, a speaker every time. And then you sell your books in the back of the room. And that's where you're using that autograph book sticker. Now, always discount your book just for Rotary today and offer two for one deals. Announce because, you know, buy one and give one to a friend. That's what I always say. Give one to someone you care about. That's what my signage says for the book of comfort. I get excited about this because I really did this for a long time. <laughs> um, announce a percent, if it's for a nonprofit, Announce that a percentage of your sales uh, will be donated to the back to the nonprofit, and then people are motivated to also buy your book to help the nonprofit. I mean, that's a good rationalization process for them. But it feels so good. That was a, you know, Michael and I early on said whenever we do we talk to a nonprofit, we always want to give back, and um, we were proud to do that. That that made us feel good. Use good signage. And I also like good book tables. Book tables, I don't think should be boring. I learned to take, I learned to tape together empty boxes and stick them under a pretty tablecloth. I always brought my own tablecloth and I created different levels and heights. And then I got stands, you know, so I had my book open um, in a stand and then I had them out for people to look at and then a little area for me to sign. So um, I got to have good signage. And consider putting your um, getting a banner for uh, that you that has your book cover on it and and different ways you can attach it to the wall behind you because if you attach it to your table then people stand in front of it and you might as well not have it but you can't always use nails you have to get like that little um, sticky gray stuff or um, or some super tape uh, and um, that will you'll use that over and over again. Bring a pal to have um, to handle your cash and checks if you can. Uh, credit card if you want to. I never took credit cards, and it was never a problem. And it, and I always let people mail me a check. No one ever stiffed me anytime. And I always felt if someone was so desperate that they had to stiff me for the book of comforts, they needed the book more than I needed the money. And you want your friend there also to take photos because you always wanna post these photos on your website and social media. So it's all, it's wonderful. It all works with itself. Have a drawing of business cards for a free book. And ooh, look, all those emails you got from those cards. So um, there's all kinds of strategies. Pass around a clipboard with an email sign-up sheet for promotions and events. Say, I won't bug you with these, but if you want to know about this, let me you know, and there's more emails. 
make a simple feedback sheet to put on seats beforehand, uh, asking for their takeaways. What could you do to improve? It's very good to know what they took away, you know, from your talk. Um, what you can do to approve, raves and compliments with a little box they need to check off saying, do I, may, if they give you a compliment, or do you have permission to use it in your materials? And that's how you get those testimonials. And give your book, if you're on a panel, give your book to all the other speakers. I ended up selling my book to a doctor for years for his um, waiting room <laughs> in Thousand Oaks. <laughs> he, he just, it was the tiniest little waiting room, but um, he just, you know, bought them from me and then, re and then resold them. And, uh, and then I had a panelist who was very cold, very unresponsive. And I thought, oh, he hates my guts. He hated my, hates my book. He hates my guts. Oh, well, can't please everyone. He contacted me the next day because I gave him a book and he looked at it and his son was very troubled and he, he wanted another book to give that he could give to his adult son. Oh, that was so touching. So you just never know where these things are going to lead. A little tip, if you're speaking at a luncheon, consider asking them to save your plate for after you talk. I cannot eat before I talk. I just can't do it. I don't, you know, I want my lipstick to be fresh. I don't want my stomach to be full. I want to have energy, excitement. And after you sit down, there's plenty of meeting left before you're going to go back to your book table. So eat then. And of course, you need to track the books you brought, the books you sold, your starter and ending cash. Um, you want to do that. Now, uh, I just want to talk briefly about tax because I lost, I thought that screen. There we go. Sales tax. Whether you're self-published or buying author priced books from a print on demand or a publisher, you still have to pay sales tax because it's on, because you pay on the higher number, not the discounted number. And you pay on the final user uh, when it's sold to the final user. Um, so there's no sales tax to you when you sell books to a retailer, <clears throat> as you probably know by now. You, you can um, figure the sales tax uh, um, into what the customer pays. Um, but because when you, at the end of the, when you pay your sales ta tax, it's figured by adding all the very various prices you sold your book at and, and um, dividing, you know, with the, with the number of books sold. So it doesn't matter that you're selling your books at different prices. Um, you still have to pay the sales tax. Now, my hot tip is it's, I got to the point at first we were taking change <laughs> and taking the time to figure out the sales tax on different amounts of books. And um, because I always had different discounts, I didn't always have time to prefigure that stuff. And that's holding up the line and it's just um, no fun. So finally I said, heck with it. I'm just going to charge a flat fee, no sales tax. And I'll in fact have a sign that says, and we pay sales tax, hey, you know, for this is a $20 book, but for you today, it is only um, $15 and I pay the sales tax. And then I would just pay the sales tax on the, on the price of the book. So it, I found that to be much easier. So check out the Self-Publishers Legal Handbook by Helen Sedgwick. Um, she covers all the sales tax stuff. All right, so we are almost done. Patricia? Yeah. I just want to give you a heads up that you're a, a little under four minutes out. Oh, dear. All right. Well, um, workshops, if you can create a workshop, um, that's marvelous if you have something to teach. And it's good to partner with a, a location that has their own mailing list. You always want to try to share mailing lists to double the potential attendance and to share the cost and profit. Um, I did that with a yoga studio or uh, partner with another author. Let's see, book table signings. 
they're not usually big sales, but they can surprise you. A woman uh, bought nine books as Christmas presents for her book club. Uh, the last, <clears throat> last time I had a book table. And one time I sold a book, uh, I only sold one book and it led to my getting uh, called up to do um, a talk and a, and a workshop for the Slow County um, Division of Foster Parents because the mother gave the book to her daughter and that was her job. So, I mean, you just never know. So always try to do any book table signings with an other author. It makes it a lot more fun. Check with your, lot, your local library often has that. Um, also hot tip, I pre-wrap signed books in basic wrapping paper at no extra cost during the holidays. And sometimes I sell one or two, sometimes I sell 10. One man, because <clears throat> men are like, wait a minute, this is something my wife is gonna like and, it, and it's all ready to give her. He liked that concept so much and there were so many women in his life. He contacted me for five to 10 books a couple times a year for about three years. <laughs> and I wrapped those books and I was like, sure. <laughs> so, um, whew, all right. So are you overwhelmed? <laughs> you guys, uh, I am. <laughs> the, this, this is, as you said, as I said before, this, this can be really overwhelming, but be patient. Nobody learns it all overnight. Just remember that the, the key is to find what works for your goals, for your budget, for your time, for your heart and soul, and what makes you feel good. And most of all, for your, your life, core values and your priorities and enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>